Hello my friend, I hope you're doing well. This is the second part in this video series. In this part, we'll be looking into how to add 2D and 3D content to your immersive views. We'll also be looking into how to manipulate your models using gestures. Here, somewhere on the screen should be a link for the first part where I covered how to add 2D and 3D content to windows and volumes. Now let's add two humongous dinosaurs in your space using reality view and model 3D. take a look into our stegosaurus model 3d immersive view so let's click on it to open it you can see that we have a panel of text with the glass background effect on it there's a close button when you press this button we go back to a previous view let's load it again you can see that our model is now something that we can manipulate so we can translate it we can also scale and rotate it so let's take a look at how this was made. So if we take a look at this view, we have some environment actions at the top that allow us to open a window, dismiss a window, dismiss our immersive space. There's a property wrapper called physical metric that we'll take a look into in a bit. Let's just start taking a look at this view by taking a look at our body. So you can see that here, I'm in an immersive view. I am loading a model 3D with the name of Stegosaurus that's in our reality kit content bundle. And on the resolved model, uh, we are using the same view modifiers that we have used previously. So resizable scale to fit. We'll take a look into these other modifiers when we take a look into gesture manipulation. But first, let's take a look at some simple things like we have an overlay to overlay content on top of our model 3D. The alignment is top leading. Uh, this is a VStack with a text and a button. The button dismisses our immersive space. And then uh, there's some block of text with some like frame set to it. So it kind of appears properly over here. You can see that our button here, it only dismisses the immersive space. So how does our home view appear and disappear? So you can see here at the bottom, I have the on appear and on disappear view modifiers to this immersive view. So whenever this appears, I am dismissing our home view window and when it disappears I am opening the same window of the home view again. Now let's take a look at how to position the dinosaur in your view. So I am using the Swift UI offset modifiers to position the dinosaur as per my liking. I'm also doing the same thing for the card for the dino where the information of the dinosaur is shown. So when I was positioning the dinosaur in the space, I kind of realized that I'm using the Swift UI offset modifiers and I'm adding some arbitrary values. I was just playing around with them. And these values were coming out to be like 1500 points and like minus 5000 points. When you're, when you're dealing with spatial content that's in front of you, point values don't really make too much sense. Like what is 1500 points translate to in the physical world? So I was, figuring out like, is, is there a better way to do this? And uh, I found out about this property wrapper called physical metric. So physical metric, what you can do is you can set uh, the values for it. And these are not editable at runtime. So you basically set them here. So I'm basically saying like the Z offset of my dyno is minus three meters here. And what it does, it basically translates your meters value to like Swift UI points without you having to worry about it. So here you can take a look that I'm setting the Z offset of my dinosaur to be minus three meters and the Y offset of the dinosaur to be minus one. You'll be wondering why minus three meters, right? So this is the perfect time to talk about the differences between the coordinate systems for Swift UI and Reality Kit. Here is a nice little visual that explains what are the differences between the reality kit coordinate system and the swift ui coordinate system so you can clearly see here that for swift ui y-axis is pointing downwards for reality kit the y-axis is pointing upwards so that's the main difference so here the offset is essentially a view modifier that uses the swift ui coordinates so our negative z essentially pushes it far away from us so here I'm saying Z offset is minus three meters, so three meters in front of us. And Y offset is minus one meter 
which means that I want it to be pushed up in the y-axis. So that's why it's minus. So understand the difference is that's why it's minus. So now we want to create this gesture of like manipulating our stegosaurus. So let's take a look at how this was done. So first, we'll create a manipulation gesture that returns a affine transform 3D. So we are doing a drag gesture simultaneously with a magnify gesture and then also simultaneously with a rotate gesture. So we can simultaneously rotate, translate and scale this model. Then we are using a map on it and then we are basically extracting the gesture components for translation scale and rotation from it. So this was a helper function that was provided by Apple sample. So I just like copied it here, but let's take a look at what it's doing. So you can see that it's an extension to our simultaneous gesture. And you can see that it's a simultaneous gesture that uh, first takes a simultaneous gesture of like drag gesture and magnify gesture. And then it kind of adds up a simultaneous gesture of rotate on top of this simultaneous gesture. It's a simultaneous gesture reception. What the component function does here, it basically extracts and then we return the translation size and rotation from it. And we are getting those values and we are returning them as an affine transform 3D. We're setting its scale, rotation and translation. Since we are getting this value, we need something to store it so that we can apply it to our uh, model. So we are creating a manipulation state and we are having two properties in it. One is a transform, which is the affine transform 3D. That's what we are returning and a state to basically tell us when the manipulation is active. And we are going to create a gesture state variable here that stores the gesture state and we are initializing the manipulation state here. So now what happens is that we apply this gesture here. With the gesture modifier, we can just say that when our manipulation gesture is updating, I want you to bind with this manipulation state. And here it passes us a closure that gives us like the values uh, that we are getting from our gesture. Again, this value is this affine transform 3D that we return here. And then the state of it and the state could be uh, when the gesture is active and the when the gesture is inactive. So that's what the closure returns us. So we can store that in our uh, manipulation state. So we can just say whenever the state changes, we can save it in our manipulation state. Same thing with the values of our affine transform. We are basically saving that here. So we have saved our values in our manipulation state, but yet we have not applied them to our dinosaur. So what we are going to do now, we are going to use the scale effect, the rotation 3D effect and the offset modifiers to apply our scale, our rotation and our translations. So we can extract the scale from the transform, the rotation from our transform and the X, Y and Z translations from our transform and directly apply it using our view modifiers. And that's how the gesture manipulations get applied to our 3D model. One more thing here to note is that you'll see that I have extra rotation 3D effect and offsets. So you can think of these as like the default values of where the dyno should be at and how it should be initially rotated when the view loads. So when there are no manipulations, are being performed, our object will return to these original values. The point I'm trying to make here is that your manipulations will add on top of your default values. So you can add your manipulations on top of that. Just something to keep in mind. So now let's take a look at how we can bring the same Stegosaurus to life using a reality view. So right off the bat, when the view loads, you can see some differences. The view has an animation playing on it. You can see that there is a, uh, there's a card that kind of shows the information with a nice glass background effect and a close button that takes you back to the previous view. So one thing I would like to really highlight is that whenever you are kind of doing something with an immersive view, I will highly recommend that you should not use a model 3D. You should stick to a reality view because that gives you more flexibility to sort of play around with things. Uh, model 3 is mostly suited for like volumes and maybe like attaching 
3D content to your 2D view. So that's where it is best suited. In this particular scenario for immersive views, if your model is your main thing, use a reality view. So let's take a look at how this view was constructed. So you can see that in my body, I have a reality view here. Our reality view uh, make closure has content and also has attachments. So our view now is an attachment that we are attaching to this 3D model. It makes perfect sense, right? Like when you say it like that. So you have a 3D model, you're going to attach an information card to it. So that is an attachment and it can be any Swift UI view that you can attach. So let's see how that is done. First, let's see how our model was loaded. That's the first thing we should do. So we have our uh, Stegosaurus entity that's kind of loaded from our reality kit content bundle. And here you can see that I'm setting its position, its rotation so that it's kind of positioned sideways and simply adding it to our content. And then I am seeing if there are any animations available on it and then I'm simply playing it. I am also making sure that the animation repeats as it plays. So now we have to create this card. So you can see that this reality view has a different initializer and it takes three closures. One is the make closure that you see here. One is the update closure that we are pretty much doing nothing in it. And then there is the attachment closures, which is where we define the attachments. So here I'm just creating an attachment object and I'm giving it an ID. Uh, we'll see where the ID is used in a bit, but it's essentially a VStack with some text on it and a button that dismisses our immersive space. It has a glass background effect on our VStack. Okay, so that's our attachment. So what happens is that here I can say, hey, reality view, I have an attachment with the ID of Stego info that I have defined here. If you find this attachment, you basically add this attachment to my content and then I'll position it. So what is actually happening is your attachment, which was a Swift UI view now is converted into an entity here. So we'll be treated like an entity. And the benefit we have of that is that we can position it in meters in reality kit space. So you can see if I'm positioning the Y, in the positive y axis, I want to push it a little bit up. I'm using 0.5 here. It's something to keep in mind. That's what this view does. It's very simple, very straightforward. So, so far, we looked at how to bring an immersive view in your space that kind of leverages your own environment, right? So, the dinosaur was in your space. But the true effect actually happens when you put yourself into the world of the dinosaur and really immerse yourself. So we can create a fully immersive environment and we are going to take a look at that. So let's just launch it and see what is happening here on this view. So we have launched this view uh, and there's a bunch of things going on. First, we have a animated Brachiosaurus that is humongous. You can see it at its full glory. It's looking very huge. I just have this giant skybox here and I don't really have like a proper environment like a land on which the Brachiosaurus is standing or something. I have uh, some text here on a panel and on that panel I have this small dinosaur here that is just sitting there not animating just kind of like an attachment. So let's take a look at how this view was made. So I have a reality view with the make, update, and attachments closure here. So if the first thing I'm doing here is I'm loading the environment resource for our IBL, which is named partially cloudy skybox that we've seen before. Uh, I'm saving it into this variable called environment. Then I'm going to simply load our Brachiosaurus from our reality kit content bundle here. And I'm going to position it to where I like. Uh, I'm going to scale it appropriately. This is trial and error. You simply go and tweak these values and see where you want to place your content. That's how you set it up. And then you are uh, setting up the rotation for it. And here you can see that I have created a helper function called degrees to radians. 
let's take a look at this function real quick. It basically converts the degrees to radians by multiplying it by pi by 180. So that's exactly what it's doing. All right, back to this. So our dinosaur is loaded. I'm also checking the available animations and basically playing the animation on repeat on my Brachiosaurus. And then we have already done this before uh, when we were doing the Triceratop portal. We are setting the image based light component on this Brachiosaurus and we are basically passing our environment light as an environment with the intensity of 3. So again your brightness can be controlled with the intensity exponent here. Then I also need to set up an image based light receiver component on the Brachiosaurus and here I'm saying that the entity, the target entity for it is our Brachiosaurus. All right, so that kind of finishes the setup for our Brachiosaurus and is properly lit at this point. Then we are going to create this skybox that surrounds everything, right? So we have seen this is the same function that we have taken a look at. It creates a giant sphere, applies the skybox textures to it, and then we are inverting it. We are flipping it to the inside. So we are creating the skybox and then we are adding our skybox to our content as well. We are not setting it to a world this time. We are directly adding it to our content. So that's why we see it everywhere. Okay. Uh, then, so then we are loading the attachment. So let's see. So I have created the attachments. You can see that there are two attachments here, right? So one is simply the card with the text and here we have the close button. So it's simply a VStack with the description and a button here and uh, with the glass background effect. What is different here that I also want to show you that you can attach a model 3D as an attachment, okay? So here I've created another attachment. So you can pretty much define any number of attachments here. So I've created an attachment here. I've called it mini Brachio. And then here I have a model 3D and I have made it resize, resizable and scale to fit. And I have given it a frame to basically scale it appropriately. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. So first I load the information card. Okay. And I am going to position it to my liking. So it kind of sets it appropriately. Now I'm going to create the entity for the attachment of mini Brachio. So I'm going to load it. But here's the cool part. I can now make it a child of our info card. So it's position above it, right? So I made our mini dinosaur, the mini Brachio as a child of our information card. I positioned it appropriately relative to this card. Uh, I also set its rotation so it's facing sideways and then here's the coolest thing. So if you use a model 3D in a reality view now, because it's an entity now, you can set the image based light component on it and image based light receiver component. So our mini dinosaur can also now get some environment lighting. So this is how you light any model 3D. And that's it for this view. Well, that is the end of this part. We looked into adding 2D and 3D content to your immersive views. We also looked at how to manipulate the models and also looked at how to use attachments. In the final part of this series, we'll be putting together everything that we have learned in part one and part two to create a fun dinosaur finding experience using some portal effects. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and enable the notification so you don't miss out on the next one. I'll see you real soon. Ciao.